with the raw ratings getting to the point that they did, I had a hope that maybe the WWE would really try to put forth better effort and really try to affect some positive change in terms of just the overall feeling surrounding their show as much as anything else. And hopefully, as a byproduct, give us a little bit better of a raw to stomach every week. And, you know, while some of the things they've done over the past few weeks have been done in kind of a knee-jerk, reflex type of way, I'll give the WWE some due. The Raws over the past couple of weeks have been much easier to sit through, have been much easier to watch. Uh, is that necessarily saying a whole ton? Not really. Does that mean that the shows the past couple of weeks have been great? No. But they've been passable. Based off of how bad 2015 was, by and large, in my opinion, I'll take passable at this point. And a couple of straight passable shows to finish off 2015, to head into 2016, it's a good place to start. And the WWE had a good place to start with this week's show. You're going right into Vince McMahon and Roman Reigns. And, you know, when Vince is on TV, it's different. When Vince is on TV, especially now, it does feel special. He feels every bit the big attraction that anybody else does, if not more so. Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, you name it. He's a bigger attraction in terms of a special attraction than anybody, in my opinion, because over the past few years, Vince has appeared on TV less than any of those guys combined. So now, not only has Vince been on TV once, it's now multiple times. And by association, that makes whatever he's involved with feel like a really, really big deal. So it logically makes sense if you're trying to not only get over your new champion, Roman Reigns, but get him over in the right way, especially because you got to build him up for his match with God, whether that's going to happen at WrestleMania or hell, it might even rush it and happen at the freaking Royal Rumble. It would seem like that's the way to go, and it is. But something happens along the way. And this is the danger sometimes of doing a segment that involves the McMahon family, and in particular Vince McMahon. While you can see there's more creative license and liberty given to the boss, because at the end of the day, even Kevin Dunn's going to be like, you go ahead, Vincey's. Take as much time as you need. We'll do the rest of the show around it. Nobody's going to say shit to the dude. But there becomes a problem along the way in the sense that nobody tells Vince what to do. So there's nobody putting the brakes to something or saying, whoa, we need to pull back and think about this for a second. At some point in time along the way in this opening segment, it went from the heat between Vince and Roman Reigns to some kind of like awkward social commentary almost it seemed like to me about the police and about Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and it was just fucking weird. Because now it goes from Roman Reigns being the focal point, being the center point, to now it's about Vince McMahon being arrested and Roman Reigns didn't even do anything to actually get the guy arrested. That's why I don't really understand. If you're gonna go down that road, you know, at least when in Austin used to get arrested, Vince would do something to get Austin arrested. And as a result, there would be your hook, there would be your story that would carry you through at least the rest of that Raw, if not into next week's Raw. Now here, you're just having Vince get arrested by doing Vince's own thing, and Roman Reigns is nowhere to be seen. And I do have a bit of a problem with that. You bring somebody like Vince on TV to build up your champion and elevate your champion, not to make your champion disappear. It's bad enough if Roman Reigns kind of has that shit-eating, half-confused grin look on his face of, I don't know what we're really doing here. Yeah, I don't know what they're really doing here. Now, I like the fact that they actually did a little bit of follow-up on Vince going to jail in terms of showing the booking photo, having Renee Young be at the jail, all, you know, reporter-like. That was cool. But if you're going to do this, at least go all the way with this. I mean, I think back in the day to SummerSlam many years ago, with the big boss man in the freaking Mountie. And the Mountie lost, so he had to go to jail. They showed everything. They showed him getting fingerprinted. They showed him getting photoed. Are you getting his mug shot? They showed him actually getting locked up in his holding cell. That's what we should have seen here. They should have spared no expense. At least if you were going to go all in on Vince, which is what they seem to do this week and make the show about Vince, 
then shit, go all the way with it. I just don't like the way they did this in the sense that it took the shine and the focus off of Roman Reigns pretty much entirely. And yeah, they came back to it later on in the night, but again, the spotlight still shined on Vince. It was funny TV. It's entertaining TV usually when Vince is on there, but I think they could have done more in terms of the whole Vince goes to jail story. They could have made a whole bigger deal out of it and made it fucking epic and awesome. But again, the bigger problem is, is you've got Roman Reigns just kind of blowing in the breeze. And the spotlight and focus is not on him. And I don't think that's what you're trying to accomplish here. One thing that this show did do this week was accomplish something positive in terms of Kevin Owens' character. It was like they actually tried to give him some type of character. They tried to have him, you know, be somebody that has something that makes him tick. Uh, he goes out there and he loses to Neville in quick order. And I like when a heel loses quickly, especially in a situation like this. You know, don't let him sit there and get beat down by the babyface. Don't let him do a bunch of stupid shit. You just go in there. The babyface got lucky. The babyface got one over. People forget about it really quickly. That's the way to do it. So Neville goes over here and then Kevin Owens beats the ever-loving piss out of him because he's a sore loser. Fine. Fucking that's great. And then later on in the night when Ambrose is a part of the six-man tag, eventually here comes Kevin Owens after the match to beat the ever-loving piss out of Dean Ambrose. Cool. They've got Owens doing something. Kind of making him look like a spoiled brat, sore loser, and at the same time, an intimidating fucking badass. I kind of like that. They did something good with Owens this week. Thank God. One thing they didn't do good with this week, though, was the Divas Revolution. Oh, my God. Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Oh, this match was terrible. I mean, this was just boo-boo, doo-doo, bad. And you know it was. I mean, it just didn't get much worse than this match. It was god-awful, in large part because it was just too long. I'm sitting there watching, and the match is still going. And the match is still going. And I even looked down at one point in time at my wrist for a watch that I don't even wear to tell me the time because it was that bad. You know it's bad. When the crowd goes from chanting for Sasha Banks a few months ago, you know, and you're talking again about being in Brooklyn, that pro NXT crowd, that smarter type of crowd, if you will, you know, they're all about somebody like a Sasha Banks. Now, here's Sasha Banks, here's Becky Lynch, two of the big four, if you will, of NXT divas, and the crowd doesn't care. And the only time they really care is to chant bullring. Oopsie daisies. Not a good spotlight to feature Sasha Banks. Not a good spotlight for Becky Lynch. I don't know if it was just that Becky Lynch isn't that good. Their chemistry seemed off. The timing was off. It was just bad. Now, in terms of what they did with the New Day and Lucha Dragons, I was okay with it just in the sense of, yes, you would let Callisto go over Kofi Kingston. That's fine. Uh, but then you make sure that Big E goes over on somebody, in this case, Sin Cara. It's whatever. You know, you gave the... The New Day, a few minutes to shine, even though I'm still not down with the freaking unicorn dildos on their fucking heads. I think it's stupid. I mean, in some ways, maybe it fits with the New Day's whole shtick and mantra, but I, I could just do without it. But hey, if it's another way to move merch and help these guys continue to get a big spotlight every week, then I guess I'll just deal with it for the time being. The only thing I didn't like about this is the fact that Big E had to get help and distraction uh, from one of his crew in order to beat Sankara. This should just never happen. In no way, shape, or form should Big E need help to beat fucking Sankara. That is ridiculous. That is ludicrous. And the WWE should be goddamn ashamed of themselves. Probably the biggest clusterfuck of all on this entire night, though, was Ms. TV. I mean, it was just like, hey, we got a bunch of people sitting in back at the catering table. Let's just throw them all fucking out there. Here comes Zack Ryder. Here comes Heath Slater. Here comes Ryback. Here comes our truth. Holy shit. And here comes the big slow. Oh, my fucking Christ. You know, and then you got the big slow sitting there. And I don't know if it was a botch or not, but he's talking about he's the number one entrant in the Royal Rumble. Does that mean you're the first person to declare? Or does that mean you're actually entering in number one? I wonder if anybody in the WWE, frankly, even fucking knows at this point in time. 
you know, a segment like this, where you're, you're really trying to tie into the Royal Rumble, is needed, and that's fine. And I don't mind the fact that it kind of had this helter-skelter, what-the-fuck feel going on with it. But to me, the focus is on the wrong person. You should be kicking it off with Ryback, not the fucking Big Show. This company just can't quit the Big Show. And I don't fucking get it, and I don't know why. They just can't fucking quit him. And even after he makes his announcement, you get come back from commercial, here's a match between him and Ryback. The focus is still ultimately on the Big Show. Fucking my God. Enough. Is he enough? You know, this, instead of this being a spotlight for somebody like a Ryback, you know, and making him really seem like a big-time competitor for that 2016 Royal Rumble match, you put the emphasis on the goddamn big slow. Oh, Christ almighty. But then we get to the main event, which the company did a good job of building up to throughout the course of the night, and that was John Cena taking on Alberto Del Rio. And the interaction between the two of them on the mic heading up into the match was okay. And I like seeing ADR get pissed, but not like out of control pissed, but kind of just like indignant, angry, how dare you pissed. You know, it was good to see that out of a heel, not whiny, bitchy pissed, but just legitimately angry, you know. How dare this motherfucker. I beat him for the U.S. title. I set the terms. Of course, he gave him the freaking title match anyway. But John Cena, Alberto Del Rio, U.S. title match, closing out Raw. You know, they built up to this throughout the night, and I thought they did a pretty good job of building up to this. John Cena's back, and at this point in time, you know, in this type of role, that's okay. And now he looks at the League of Nations. He's potentially got a whole new crew of people to run through until he gets his eventual match with Roman Reigns for the title. Oh, boy! But to be fair, ADR and Cena have pretty good chemistry in the ring. They should. They've worked together enough over the past few years. And it was a solid match. This felt like the type of match that you should get if you're going to have a main event segment of Raw be a wrestling match. I mean, this match felt like it had consequence. It felt like it had purpose. You know, there's no question that Cena being back, you know, bumps up things just a little bit. You know, and seeing what they did here, you know, got me hooked going towards the end of the night. You know, it's one of these things that I expect a clean finish. No, if I was expecting a clean finish, it's probably going to be Cena winning back the U.S. title, which I think would be completely ridiculous at this point. As would, frankly, ADR beating him clean. So having the League of Nations end up fucking him up, I don't like the fact that Cena... You know, it took so much for the League of Nations to finally do it, and they still had to clearly establish that Cena could win in this case before the League of Nations interfered. Usually I'm okay with something like that where you establish that the guy should have won, but he didn't because he interfered. It's fucking Cena. You don't need to go through that crap. To me, if anything, would have been better off. You're trying to build up this League of Nations group into some type of Woodrow Wilson type of uh, ass-beating faction then why even bother having the match? Just have him beat the holy hell piss out of John Cena for many, many minutes. You know, but it is what it is. It sets up to where you knew they were going to go. You are going to have Roman Reigns make his big triumphant return to bail out John Cena to help save the day. And it was interesting to me, Cena's having all this trouble, and now Roman Reigns is just Superman punching and beating the shit out of everybody. And then ultimately Vince has magically made bail in such a short amount of time which doesn't seem very realistic to me. I would think it would take a little bit longer from the time you got hauled away from the arena to actually getting booked, fingerprinted, mugshotted in the holding cell, waiting for somebody to come bail you out. You know, usually I would think it would take longer than it does. But anyways, that's TV for you, and that's definitely professional wrestling for you. Time frames don't always matter so much. Uh, but again, we get to the end here, and you know... We're doing Sheamus versus Roman Reigns next week on Raw. Vince is the guest referee. And again, the focus is primarily on Vince. And this is kind of that territorial mindset in a way that things are going really, really bad. So Vince is doing what he did in a way in the Attitude Era during the Monday Night Wars. He got to the point he said, I can't trust anybody more than myself, so let's put myself in the top spot. Which was perfectly fine then. He was the biggest star of the Attitude Era, and I'll still argue that with anybody to this day. He was the most important guy, and he was the most necessary guy for that company to survive and thrive like they did during that time period. But here now, you know, it, it's cool that he throws in that kind of twist, that kind of surprise, that he's going to be the special guest referee. But again, it's ending with him saying, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. And the focus is everywhere 
except where it should be, which should be on the champion, the guy that you're trying to get over like a million bucks, Roman Reigns. Uh, maybe this pays off, and maybe this works. And maybe next week they use this title match to build up to something between Reigns and Triple H, maybe even at the Royal Rumble. Maybe they won't even wait to WrestleMania. We'll, we'll find out. We'll see. But I just don't like the fact that the focus goes so much on the McMahons. And frankly, let me point this out too. If we were going to go with arresting anybody, where is the storyline continuity with Stephanie McMahon? If anything, shouldn't Tom Phillips be coming out asking that she be arrested for assaulting him? It would have been even higher comedy, frankly, in my opinion, if you would have sent both of their asses to fucking jail. Oh my God, could you imagine? Especially if you did some of the, the big boss man mounting crap from years ago that you did where you actually showed every step along the way, not just one mugshot and then them leaving. You show every fucking thing. That would be incredible right there. In general, though, like I said, this show over the past couple of weeks has had a little bit of a better feeling to it, a little bit aura better aura surrounding it. And again, this week, there were things that I enjoyed, and it served, if nothing else, to be a passable Raw, and at least started to set the table for next week's show, kicking off 2016, and the Royal Rumble. It's just, if Vince is going to continue to be on TV, which frankly he probably needs to through WrestleMania season for sure, then I think they need to figure out a little bit better how to deploy him and how to utilize him where he's a big deal, but he's not the only deal in town. 